All right, um, we're going to have a little conversation, um, mainly about um, zero-day exploits and the media. Now, this isn't really a zero-day exploit. It's not... It's been well known forever, <laughs> for a long time. And I just want to put you in the mindset of somebody who would take advantage of the situation. So uh, I am... Um, I moderate a, uh, a hacking and cracking forum, and I see this video, and I get really not irritated or anything. It's just, it's I see this horrible thing that could happen, and whenever you tell somebody else what a what a vulnerability is and if it could be used against someone in any significant way. I I could I could take I could exploit that to its fullest potential, and I'm going to show you an example. So here is a video from AVE. He's an amazing YouTuber. If you like um, teardowns of electronics uh, with some awesome Canadian language, <laughs> watch his channel. It's fantastic. So welcome back to something. You'll forgive me my usual girth of tool and breadth of workshop on account of being. On the job, not in the British. Digress. Okay, so we are having a revisit of these fire suppression noozles. Once you rub one out of that greasy old brass lantern, it's tough to get the schmoo back in. Of lasers, frickin' lasers. So pause it now and consider yourself a high school dork, which I was back when a time when we were not allowed to be dorks. You got the cool kids table, you want to get one over on them. You bring your high powered laser to school. The one that you got from the Big Rock Candy Mountain Miles Dollarama. And you shoot this with the laser. It heats up. Uh, Bob's your auntie, of course. The cool kids table gets covered in disgusting black schmoo because the pipes are full of water that goes septic. Okay, so ha ha and so forth. Now messing with a life-saving device is trouble. You will get in big trouble for that. But what about more nefarious purposes than just mischief? So say you're up to no good, you're gonna do a thieving run in a commercial building. Now you bring... Okay, enough. Uh, I'm using this under the guise of fair use, of course. But that's it's not this it's not the the device having this blatant security flaw it's that um uh, it's he's been um put forth to fix this problem now you could you could judge that he's you know inventing a way there's a there's a shield down here that um is meant to mitigate the um the laser heat and all that but um there are much more powerful lasers that I could bring into that situation. I could bring in, you know, three or four megawatt lasers that'll, you know, burn a pitch to ash, and um, that the device would be effectively useless. And no matter how much, um, how big of a heat sink you put on that thing, uh, it's not going to solve the situation. And putting a shield over a life-saving device like this um, is going to be a problem because if you need to protect against the actual threat, which is a fire. Um, if you're insulating that, that tube too much, um, it's basically a um, a uh, grease um, with a, a small mercury pellet in there, and it's uh, fires in two stages. The mercury pellet um, is meant to disengage, or it could be something other, uh, else, like um, like a gallium alloy or something like that, something that's non-toxic, and it, the water pressure behind it just juts out in front and then right because gallium um, melts at like 100 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, you can alloy it with other materials to bring that temperature up but the point is once it gets hot it starts evacuating its contents which just so happens to be the pipeline for a commercial center and a lot of these have redundancies where um, other devices would auto activate automatically if one triggers or whatever and you have he, right, AB, has put out a video telling the plot problem and a solution to the problem, and that is a, it's a white hat thing to do, but you have to be very careful 
with things like that. If you tell, uh, if you get about an exploit, uh, 200,000 people watch this. 200,000 people now have the idea that that is a problem. And they can just go out and do this now <laughs> to anything that's un in unsecured. It's, you know, they have now been notified of the problem. And I could, if I was just so tempted to do so, also notify every media contact on the planet and tell them as well. If I wanted to, contact after contact, call them up automatically, just ring them in, let them know about this one security problem, be over AP Newswire, over, it'd be known, known everywhere, you'd see it tomorrow, if I called every single one of these news contacts, all of them. Do you see my problem? I can notify the world of this exploit. I could have it online. I could have it on Facebook's front page in a matter of minutes. And you told someone that 200,000 people that this was an issue. Well, what, what, me, one person, could go out and do this. I could do it with an automated script. I could do it over Skype. I could coordinate a, a group of 200 people to start calling every number on this list one at a time and notifying them of the problem. Do you, do you understand the scale at which this, and just the notification, can harm others? Like, he's a smart dude. He knows the, the, the white hat thing, right? But it's just, it's a dumb thing to do. <laughs> and I'm not saying I would do that, right? But I did just give the means of other people to do that. Right? <laughs> I mean, that list is easily available online. You could just find it by just searching just a portion of this document, taking a print screen. You know, it's just, it's bad, you know? <laughs> uh, if it were me, I would have kept quiet until it's released. And there's a reason why you hold the zero day exploits behind. I mean, we read the comments. Who needs a laser going back 100 years to be able to trigger these things with a lighter, a stick, and a well-thrown golf ball? <laughs> a sprinkler heads were, uh, were covered with white styrofoam cup for aesthetics, therefore laser-hardened. I mean, no. <laughs> it burns straight through the styrofoam. About mirroring spray paint over the shaft, they're thinking of ways to, to help mitigate this problem, but, you know, the only person who would care about this is an insurance agent. Couple points on the fire alarm. We don't care about the burning anything down. We just want to alert the building occupants as quickly as possible. A problem, and I mean, I'm sure a retail organization would care about the product that there was in, that gets water damaged as a result of this prank, right? It's just a problem, and it's not busting out the glass. It's um, it's actually melting a a small sphere of metal inside that has a lower melting point. Um, then the surrounding glass, obviously, you don't want the fire to already be 700 degrees before the thing triggers or busts out. So, I mean, solution for this already exists. Dan Architect's ugly sprinkler heads increased the head sprinkler system, concealed sprinkler heads. I mean, sure, maybe if they were, you know, concealed in some way, they were difficult to find. But it's really not... It's really not. I mean, yeah, that's surrounded. This could be heated up from the bottom, right? Because the sphere is at the bottom here. This is just basically a condom, <laughs> right? It's just there are things you could do that would that would ruin this. I mean, there's a lot. I could think of many, many, many more, and I'm sure 200,000 people could think of many, 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 many more. And they, this could be a problem overnight. You see, I mean. How many how many people do you think it would go out? Uh, probably not many, but how many people do you think, um, to trouble teens or whatever, right? Go to school the next day after watching this video and try it, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, you gotta be careful. Uh, that's that's all I wanted to say. Okay, thanks. Bye.